one time you were in darkness. You were in the darkness for, at one time, but now you are the light of the world. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And, and try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. My kids want to know what pleases me. Shouldn't I want to know what, God, what pleases God and do what pleases him? Take no part in unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. This is hard because what happens when we expose darkness? We get attacked. I'm, I'm been very careful about my feelings, how I express my feelings. I've, I mean, I've expressed some things to you guys, but that I'm, I'm just scratching the surface when it comes to the pandemic and our response and what society is doing right now. I think it's extremely evil. I think it's, it's a breakdown of society. We have, I, I wrote a letter to the governor, and I told him, you have, by what you're doing, you have completely destroyed the Hoosier hospitality. Not the industry, the fact that we... This, Hoosiers have always been, Indiana people have always been very hospitable. And it's not that way in society anymore. And I don't know when we're going to get back. And I'm not saying you shouldn't wear a mask. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, you wear a mask, you better be kind. You don't wear a mask, you better be kind. Because that's the problem. It's not the mask. Masks aren't the problem. Whether they work or not is inconsequential. Really. Really. Because they do work a little bit, but they don't work as much as they hope they would. What matters is how you act. Somebody's not wearing a mask, do you, do you <gasps> or do you attack them? See, it's, it's, not, it's not about this. It's about this. That's what it's about. Take no part in unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. We must not only be motivated by the severe consequences of our sins, but even more so by the profound change that God accomplishes in us. You were like this. You did this. You were in darkness. Now you're in light. I wish I could... Shut all the light off completely in this room. And you sit there. You ever been in a cave where you can't see your hand in front of your face? And then the lights are turned on. <gasps> what a difference. That's what he's saying. You were in darkness. Now you're in light. We not only live in light, but we're children of light. Reborn into a new humanity in Christ who is the light. And the result of this life should be to produce fruit in our lives that, that leads us to loving generosity of Christ's goodness, a willing obedience to the righteousness of Christ and a delight in the honesty of Christ's truth. Which means if, if I'm wearing a mask and somebody isn't wearing a mask and they come up to me and they're nasty to me, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to be loving to them. And the same way, if I'm not wearing a mask and they're wearing one and they came up to me, well, first of all, I'd say safe six feet apart. But if they're yelling at me, I need to be kind to them and love them. I, I, I think we get too hung up on the outward things. We need to look at the inward stuff. It should produce fruit in our lives that leads to loving generosity and the goodness of Christ, a willing obedience to the righteousness of Christ, and a delight in the honesty of Christ. See, it's not just about doing the right thing. It's about delighting in Christ. There's a song by um, Charles Clay says, we, or no, it's by um, Cayman's Call. We delight in the law of your word. Do you delight in God? Does he make you happy? Do you, do you wake up in the morning and say, Jesus, I, oh, I'm just so happy to be with you today. We should. If we, we desire to live in this way, we will be committed to discover what pleases the Lord and we will do it. It's this daily practice of discovering from his word. What is God pleased about? What do we need to do? Instead, what do we do? We indulge our self, selfish desires and desperately attempt to please others. We can't. Because this will ultimately lead to rejecting the ways of the world. If we, if we just 
follow, we will reject the ways of the world. If we follow Christ, if we try to please God, we will reject the world and their ways that lead to destruction. The deeds of darkness do not produce fruit. We must not ignore or hide them in ourselves or in the church. We must not hide those deeds of darkness. Because what happens when you hide it? It begins to rot. Caleb got a jug of milk out this morning, and he's looking, he says, Daddy, does this, is this okay? And I looked at it, I smelled it, it smelled okay, until he drank it, and it was sour. It looked fine, but it wasn't. It wasn't. Be careful how you look on the outside. You need to make sure you're clean on the inside. Don't be whitewashed tombs. Looks good on the outside, but dead bones on the inside. Paul tells us to have nothing to do with the deeds of darkness. To not even talk about what people do in secret. And why does he tell us this? You know, it's not that we're not supposed to talk honestly about what goes on. It's that we don't want to talk about it so much that it becomes commonplace and it normalizes or it dignifies or it excuses it. I'm going to call it out. But I'm not, going to talk, I'm not going to talk about sexual impurity in all of my sermons. Thank goodness. But we don't, want to, we don't want to totally ignore it and act like it's not there. We need to call it out in people's lives that we know. We don't want to dignify it and excuse it. We want to expose it. There's a story told of a billionaire who had this luxury lot, a yacht, I mean, his luxury yacht, and he wanted to hire someone to be the captain. So he, he searches and he finds the three best, most qualified people to be the skipper of his big million-dollar boat. So he decides that he's going to have them try out. So first he says, I'm, I'm, I want you guys to, to pilot the boat. I want to watch you because here's the deal. He says, I want to know that I can trust you as a captain to take me wherever I, want, I need to go and wherever my, my, the people who are on my boat, wherever they need to go. So the first guy comes, and he's a very skilled pilot. He takes the helm, and he, and he steers him, and there's these cliffs over here, and he takes them to within 30 meters at high speed to the cliffs and pulls them around, and everybody's like, Wow. He's a great pilot. He, he was safely able to go within 30 meters of these cliffs and nothing happened. Second guy comes up. He takes the helm and he's driving. He's driving at full speed and he comes within 15 meters of the cliffs. And they're like, whoa, wow. He got even closer. So the third guy goes up and what happens is everybody's like, oh, what's he going to do? What if he goes within five meters? Oh, nobody would do that. So he puts it in low gear and takes him for a nice little trip around the harbor, looking at all the beautiful houses and the beautiful scenery around. And they get back, and they pull into the slip, and, and everybody's like, well, you know, he's probably not going to pick the third guy. But the, the, the owner says, well, I, I picked the third guy. And they're like, what? Well, this is my yacht. This is something that's precious to me. And I don't want a helmsman who's just confident, so confident that he's tempted to steer it within a few meters of crashing rocks. One mistake, and it's a disaster. I want a man who will take care of my precious yacht out in the open water where we can enjoy safety and beauty that's there. See, God does not want us to be driving our precious bodies to the edge of danger. Well, I haven't, you know, there's that line, ooh, I'm over it. Nope, I'm not, you know, I'm stepping on the line. I'm not sinning, but I'm right there. That's not what God wants us to do. He wants us to take care of it. Because one small mistake, and it's done. One temptation taken, and it's done. I, I don't understand. I, I do. I do understand it. Because I understand temptation. Because I deal with it every day. But what I don't understand is how we don't look forward to what the end result is. And how many people it's going to hurt. 
if I have, if I have an affair, how many people's lives am I going to hurt? Mine, my wife's, my kids, the other person's, the church's, Jesus's, his reputation. Because I proclaim Jesus, I'm got to be careful. God doesn't want us to just live on the edge. <laughs> he doesn't want us also to just stay away from the gates of hell, you know. He wants us to, to defeat and, and, and go towards people who need Jesus. But I don't think God's going to have us, I don't think God's going to tell us, you know, I want you to go reach those, those, those men and those women who are in the strip club up in Fort Wayne. I want you to go to the strip club every night. No. Talk about you better test the spirits. Don't need to wreck our lives. There is joy and satisfaction in living well within God's limits. 